I'm Jim Viola, President and CEO of HAI. Welcome to this month's edition of VFR, the Viola Flight Report, where we review what HAI has been doing for you. I'm in Philadelphia today at the U.S. headquarters of helicopter manufacturer Leonardo. The AW-139 and the AW-119KX models are produced here. They're also building the new T-873 Alpha, the trainer for the U.S. Navy. It will be featured in the first quarter edition of the Rotor Magazine, which you'll get to see at HAI Heli Expo. I will be speaking with Bill Hunt, the CEO of Leonardo's North American Operations, a bit later. But first, I want to talk about HAI Heli Expo 2021 in New Orleans. In just three months, we'll be opening our much anticipated trade show. Nearly every person I speak with is looking forward to it and there is increasing demand for our industry to meet in person. HAI is putting all the pieces in place to make that happen for you. To date, more than 350 companies have committed to exhibiting in New Orleans, and I hope you'll join them. As you register for the show, please know that you can expect the same world-class exhibits, education, and networking that the industry has come to expect from HAI. Because 2020 has been an extraordinary year, HAI is taking extraordinary measures to create a safe event in New Orleans. Mask, social distancing, frequent cleanings, we are employing all the best practices recommended by the CDC and World Health Organizations. Visit the health and safety page on heliexpo.com to learn more about all that HAI, the city of New Orleans, and local businesses are doing to keep you safe during your stay. While our team is busy laying the groundwork for your health and safety at HAI Heli Expo, HAI is also focused on serving as your leading voice to promote safety in the global VTOL industry. So while you're in New Orleans at the HAI Heli Expo, we invite you to come see firsthand the most expansive, informative, and entertaining rotor safety zone ever. Visit the safety section on our website to learn more about HAI's safety initiative. The Utilities, Patrol, and Construction Working Group, otherwise known as UPAC, had a virtual meeting in November. A significant topic was the working group's continued effort to develop standards for the manufacture and the certification of downlines, harnesses, and other system components necessary to maintain safety during human external cargo operations. This initiative is being done in concert with FAA representatives and is a great example of how HAI members take a leadership role in our industry. We are also working on one of the most important concerns of our operators, the rising cost of insurance premiums. For some, insurance is no longer a cost of doing business, it's a cost that prevents them from being in business. To help the industry through this insurance crisis, we've established an insurance sub-working group within our flight operations working group. This sub-working group will take a close look at all the factors influencing recent changes in insurance costs and will work to identify ways to ease the financial burdens for our members. In November, HAI held our annual aerial firefighting conference online. It was a resounding success. We had nearly 1,000 registrants which is far more than we typically get for our in-person conference. 36 industry professionals gave 25 separate presentations on topics ranging from firefighting careers to safety to equipment updates. Until December 18th, registered attendees can log back onto the conference platform and view the presentations again or catch ones they missed. After December 18th, HAI members will be able to view all conference videos through the HAI Online Academy, our virtual learning portal. In U.S. legislative news, during the last weeks of the 116th Congress, the House passed the Bipartisan Aircraft Certification Reform and Accountability Act, created in response to the 737 MAX accident. The bill directs the FAA to require that OEMs adopt safety management systems and otherwise tighten safety regulations. Meanwhile, the Senate Commerce Committee has passed its own version of the bill. It strengthens the FAA's direct oversight of OEM staff who are designated representatives of the FAA. Visit our website to keep up on this and other legislative news. Finally, our top story in Rotor Daily last month 
was a story about FAA's National Drone Safety Awareness Week, which was during the third week of November. Using drones in commercial and industrial missions is becoming more and more common. So it's no surprise that our members are taking an interest in drone safety. Now it's time to hear from Bill Hunt, CEO of Leonardo Helicopters US. So Bill, tell me about your helicopter background. Yeah, I've been in the uh, rotorcraft industry for 36 years now. I had the chance to grow up uh, in the Boeing company down in Philadelphia in the rotorcraft division. Um, spent 21 years there and had a great opportunity um, to spend time in multiple programs while I was there. Um, at one point we were building the, uh, the uh, Apache fuselages in Philadelphia. I had experience on that program. Worked in the V-22 program when I was a composites engineer. Um, and then in my last opportunity there, I was uh, the uh, program manager on the operations side for the Chinook program. Had the chance to deliver the first Fs and Gs to the Army, which was a great experience. And that led me to a position here in 2006 um, as the uh, Vice President of Operations, which is when I came on board with Leonardo Helicopters. And uh, been here now for 15 years. Started out as the, uh, the Head of Operations, Vice President of Operations, and about seven years ago, I took over as the CEO. So Bill, can you tell me about the aircraft that you're building here at this Philadelphia facility? The programs are all unique. They all have their, their own unique challenges. I mean, obviously the 609 is a, is a big opportunity for us now in terms of, uh, of getting the aircraft into certification with the FAA. It's been, it's been my experience here in the 15 years has been a great journey with the FAA. They've been great supporters of us. 119 has been a great experience mainly because we, we, it was our aircraft. We're the only people that were building it in the world. Um, and we've had the chance over the years to develop it from an old steam gauge cockpit into a, into a modern aircraft. And that is what led to the opportunity with the TH program with the Navy. Um, and again, the, uh, with great support, of course, from the parent company, but a lot of the developmental work that we've been doing here led us to be able to, uh, to prime that contract and win it with the U.S. Navy, which was a great accomplishment for the company. And, and one thing I will say is we've had fantastic support from our Leonardo Helicopters parent, but also from Leonardo Spa in really supporting us to grow and to be able to take the platform and put it into a position where we could win. And then uh, the, the 139, of course, is the jewel. You know, it's been it's been a great profit aircraft, but it's, uh, it's also been a great aircraft for us in terms of the branding of Leonardo worldwide um, and the amount of different customers that are flying the aircraft. That's the other great thing for us is the line you know, you'll see today when we walk through is full of EMS operators, police aircraft, um, and the military aircraft for the U.S. Navy and for the Air Force with the 139. So, we're supporting significant customers. And you know, when the customers come here and they see their aircraft, knowing that we're gonna be part of their community is a really big thing for us. We're big community people, not just you know, the community at large and, and how we're part of that, but the communities we get to serve with the aircraft are, are a big thing for us. And, and uh, they're all exciting programs. So it looks like Leonardo is opening a new training facility, and I'm understanding that it's for pilots, operators, and uh, maintainers. Can you tell us about that? The training academy's part of, been part of the vision for quite some time. Um, in the fact that we had always looked to try and create a campus environment where a customer could come and see all of the aspects of the business in one place. You know, we had our full flight simulator in Whippany, New Jersey and customers would have to go there for the 139 full flight simulator training where if we were going to expand training, why not put it here on site? And the building that's behind me uh, is, is the new training academy and we're really excited to open it up in early next year. Um, it's been a, another uh, uh, proposal that the parent company has supported us on. You know, now when the customer comes, they can see where they're going to be trained, including full flight simulator training. They can see where their aircraft is built. They can see where their aircraft is maintained or upgraded. 
um, all in one location in one campus. And we felt that it was really important to the city of Philadelphia as well. We've been really dedicated to the city and the city's been dedicated to us with the airport um, and the local authorities, some of our local Congress people and, and uh, our senators have really been very supportive in what we've been trying to do to bring business into the city of Philadelphia. And um, a couple of years ago, Mike Cooper and I participated in the manufacturing task force here in Philly, which was really around how do we get back to being Philadelphia being a manufacturing hub and, and high technology. And we have uh, 800 people now working at this campus. And, uh, and a lot of them are, are really high tech jobs, including technicians on the shop floor that are building really highly technical aircraft these days. And so uh, it, it's been part of, it's part of the, uh, the progress we've been making and uh, we're looking forward to it opening next year. Well, that wraps up this month's edition of VFR. Please email me with your comments or suggestions on how HAI can provide you with better service. Until next time, fly safe, stay safe, and keep those rotors turning.